Good morning. Everyone, how are you today? I am really hoping that you're doing well, that you're showing people that you are blessed by the Most High God. Amen. God is good, and he is worthy to be praised. When I get up in the morning, he's the first thing I think about. I roll over, look out a window, and just thank him for a new day. Regardless of what the weather is like, amen, we don't let the weather or we don't let our emotions and our moods stop us from praising the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let me make sure I'm set up here properly. All right, praise the Lord. This is Reverend of New Birth Ministries. And today is Sunday, May 22nd, 2022. And we are alive. We're on this side of the grave. That's something to give thanks for. Amen. What I'm going to talk about today, and um, I have a lot of notes on here, so pray for me. Amen. The Holy Spirit take over. Hallelujah. It's not about the notes. It's about what he has to say. Amen. We're going to talk about being empowered by the Holy Spirit. People leave the Holy Spirit out. People, There's a lot of people around the world that talk straight to God. They go straight to God, and they go around the Holy Spirit, but we need the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit as a gift, amen. He is wisdom. Holy Spirit of God is wisdom. He's better than Google, I like to say, amen. All right, so let me get started with prayer. And I do know that um, there's a few of you who have been asking for prayer, and I'm going to include you in on this prayer, whether I say your name or not. I like to leave the name out, but God knows the names. Amen. God knows your need. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord God, hallelujah, the three in one, King of all kings and Lord of all lords, the one that rose us up this morning, the one that watched over us as we slept last night. Father God, we come to you today and we're giving you all of our problems, everything that's been trying to bombard us, we give them all to you. We want the world to know that you are our God and nothing by any means can hurt us. The enemy keeps trying to come up with things to make us sad or to make us worry or to try to make us complain. And we cannot say that we believe in you and we love you and we believe everything that Jesus did and complained at the same time. So forgive us, Father God, of our sins. We don't want anything to come in between us and you. And we know, we are confident that asking you to forgive us means that we are forgiven. You're a good father. You're a good God. And you love it when we come to you with everything, not just some things and hold some things back from you, but with everything. Father God, I ask as I speak today, by the influence of the Holy Spirit, you give me words. Holy Spirit, give me words that sink down into someone's soul, sinks down into someone's heart and their spirit that causes them to arise and, and talk about the love of Jesus Christ and talk about the kingdom to come, God's heavenly kingdom, to talk about the return of Jesus Christ. Give us all holy boldness. In Jesus' holy name, I proclaim right now in Jesus' name that as I'm preaching this for the kingdom of heaven, that you instill each and every person that is on and listening or comes later, you instill them with boldness so that they can be empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. I lift all requests up to you. You know the ones, there's one in a hospital uh, right now that, that's uh, showing a little, si little signs of fear. She's afraid of what's happening to her, Lord, so I lift her up to you. You know the ones, the ones that are having a problem with their backs, cause them to have new backs, miracles, Lord God, in Jesus' name. The ones that are having problems with their hearing, cause them to hear better than they ever heard in their entire life their entire length of living, Father God. The ones who are having financial problems, Lord God, I, I, I ask right now in Jesus' holy name that you show up and show out in their lives so much that people will know it had to be you that touched them. Amen. Just create miracles, Jesus, and we love it. Thank you, Lord, and I am honored to preach your word today. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, when I went to um, the Shiloh Bible Institute in Washington, PA, we used to sing a song, and I hope I, could, I, hope I sing the, rhyme, the words right, but it goes, be bold, and then you repeat it, 
Be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. Be bold, be bold, be strong, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. I am not afraid, no way. I am not dismayed, no way for I'm walking in faith and victory. Walking in faith and victory. Walking in faith and victory for the Lord your God is with thee. Amen. Hallelujah. God is telling us to be bold and be strong. And what's happening in the world today is getting worse and and worse. And as the world gets worse, Christians should get better. Amen. We should get better as, uh, 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 at, at speaking the word of God. And I'm not talking about standing in a pool. Everybody doesn't stand in a pulpit. Everybody can't be a preacher. Even the Bible says, are they all preachers? Everybody can't be a teacher. Everybody can't be a prophet. Everybody, you know, God has specific areas that he wants us to be in. You can be an artist and be a minister. Amen. Hallelujah. You can work on machines and be a minister. Amen. You can be a teacher and be a minister of the kingdom of God. But there is something that we need, and that is to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We know there's a lot of preachers in the world, a lot, amen, prophets, preachers, teachers, apostles, whatever they call themselves, ministers. There's a lot in the world, but how many are empowered by the Holy Spirit. You can know the word, amen, but how many are empowered by the Holy Spirit? And by empower, we mean, okay, past tense, empowered, amen, to give someone the authority or power to do something, amen, to license. Entitle, permit, allow, sanction, warrant, commission, delegate, certify, accredit. Are you accredited? Qualified? Are you qualified? Jesus said you are. Give someone the authority. Give someone permission to enable, equip, give the power to, give the means to, give the go-ahead to. Give the green light to, okay, give the okay to, give the thumbs up to, amen? And lastly, to make someone stronger and more confident, especially in controlling their life and claiming their rights, amen? Hallelujah, amen. Making people stronger, and this is what... We are to do, uh, ministers of the Most High God, we are not to cut people down. We are not to make people feel horrible. The devil does that pretty good on his own. Amen? We don't need to do that. What we need to do is encourage and uplift. Now, we can correct someone. The Holy Spirit will correct someone. Amen? But he does not condemn. The Holy Spirit does not condemn. Amen? He'll chastise you. But the devil condemns. Amen? Now, to be empowered, you will be bold. This is why I sang the song, Be Bold, Be Strong, for the Lord thy God. You're, if, if you say God's with you, why aren't you bold? Why do we have so many timid Christians? Somewhere something went wrong there. If you love the Lord, you're going to tell people that you love the Lord. You're not going to be ashamed, I'll use that word. You're not going to be ashamed to tell people that you are a child of the Most High God. If you are afraid of what people think, you're going to have a hard time. Amen. And you want to talk about uh, receiving uh, answers to your prayers? In order to receive you must first believe. Amen? Are you going to give the key to somebody that you don't even know that well, somebody that doesn't even deserve to have the key to your house? No, I think not. Amen? You have to know that you deserve it. You have to be bold because the, the devil is bold. 
We see that on the news every day. We see it on the, the internet every day. There are that man that up there in New York that when it, he, he, I saw the video, and I would not suggest anybody else to look at it because it's something that you cannot unsee. I saw the video from inside. He must have had a recorder or something on him, a camera, and you could see him driving up to the store, getting out, and just shooting like he was one of those games. I believe those games are teaching people how to uh, kill people like that, and they get bold. They're emboldened with evil spirits. Now, and, and it was pitiful. It was, it was a shame watching all these people get shot, losing their lives, and he actually, he was doing it because he didn't like black people, and he actually came up on a white man and started to shoot him, and the guy said, hey, and he said, oh, sorry, and he left him and went on and started, kept on shooting, shooting black people. Now, if the devil can embolden people to do stuff like that, why are Christians so quiet? Why can't we be bold? Amen. What is the problem? Have we, has fear entered into our hearts? The Bible says in the end times, people are going to have heart attacks and start dying because of fear. Amen. I'll start with Acts 1. Let me see, Acts chapter 1, and it says, I have a lot of notes here, so pray for me. Amen. Holy Spirit, do that thing. Acts 1 says, the former treaties I have made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Now, he's talking about what Jesus was doing and teaching here, okay, Acts chapter 1. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that, he, after that, he through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Jesus and the Holy Ghost worked closely together, amen? He threw, the, T-H-R-O-U-G-H, the Holy Ghost had given commandments to the apostles, which he had chosen, to whom he also showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, said he, ye have heard of me. He's telling them Jesus is promising something to them from the Father. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. He's telling them you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. They didn't know what that was then, amen? When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, I want you to get this, the next two, seven and eight. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his power. So in other words, that's nicely said, not our business right now, okay? But verse 8 says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses both unto uh, me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Jesus made the promise to them. He promises us that today. That was not just for that day, which people are saying. Amen. It's for us too. We have power. Jesus, you believe in Jesus, you accept in him, you accept the Holy Ghost. Amen. You believe in the Holy Ghost. You are walking with power. Amen. Dynamo, dynamite. Amen. It says, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Jesus gets the last word. Jesus made a promise. And when Jesus makes a promise, unlike man, he doesn't take it back. Amen. Jesus always keeps his promise. How many people refuse his promise? Think about that. How many people refuse the Holy Ghost? How many people think they could do it on their own? I don't need that. I could do it on my own. Self-sufficient people. Self-sufficient people are going to wake up one day in hell because they need to depend on the Holy Ghost. They refused him. That stone that was refused has become the headstone of the corner, as the Bible says, amen. Do not refuse God's gift. Jesus gave us this gift. 
And it says, and while they looked steadily uh, toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood, were standing there, white apparel, which also said, ye men of, notice it says, which they also said, okay, they're speaking with Jesus, after Jesus, actually. So they're obviously heavenly beings, amen? Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returning, they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. It took a minute to get there. Amen. And when they were come in, they went into the upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of uh, Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the brother of James. Amen. These all continued on one accord. Okay, that's important. You have to be on one accord with the Holy Ghost. You have to be on one accord with God's people to be strong. No man is an island and no man stands alone. Amen. We all have to have somebody. Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Amen. Have to have somebody. It says, they continued on one accord in prayer and supplication with the women. Oops. Women with the women. Some people are shaking in their boots on that one. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Amen? And in those days, Peter stood up. Here comes the boldness. Would you do this? In front of 120 people, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been Fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us, and he had attained part of this ministry. Amen. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. We're talking about Judas here. And then Acts 2.14 says, and Peter was bold. Amen. He didn't care if people made fun of him or not. Amen. He said when he, he said what he had to say in Christ Jesus, and we should be the same way. Amen. Acts two fourteen says, but Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto him, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these people are not drunken. He's explaining how he's telling people how they weren't drunk when they received the Holy Spirit. People saw them and heard them talking in tongues. Every man was hearing his own language coming out of the apostles. Amen. Peter stood up. Now we all know Peter has um, the personality. He has an outgoing personality, and he will say what he has to say, amen, especially when it came to Jesus. Peter took his mouth, his worldly mouth, amen, God cleansed it, and he used that fisherman's mouth to praise Jesus and to tell people about the love of the Lord, amen, hallelujah. And this is what we need to do, amen. Let's look at Acts 4.29. All right, talking about boldness, let's act, look at Acts 4.29. And it says, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness that they may speak thy word. This is when people were threatening them, and people were making fun of them. They will threaten you. They will mock you. They'll make fun of you. And you talk about the Lord. I, I wrote something the other day online. They said, uh, what is the best thing you like to do when you wake up in the morning? And I said, praise the Most High God. And, and people are making fun of me and mocking me and saying all kind of crazy stuff because I'm talking about the Most High God. Now, you can't do something like that. Look, you've got to be bold. 
You can't do something like that and speak for the kingdom of heaven if you're afraid of what men are going to say back to you. I actually got to the point where it got so crazy, I, uh, what do you call I took it off so that I won't get the notifications about it anymore because I've made my sense. <laughs> Amen. I wake up and praise the most high God. I didn't ask your opinion. Hallelujah. we got to be bold. Amen. And then it goes on and says, by stretching uh, forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke, uh, they spake the word of God with boldness. There you go, with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. Everybody that got together took everything that they owned and had and put it in a pot. Amen. They put it all together so that if somebody had need, they could cover the need. This is missing in the church today. People will go to the racetrack. People will spend money on HBO. They'll spend money on Internet. People will, and, and other things, okay, uh, buying porn and all that other kind of stuff and won't give the church $20. Amen. People are, are hungry. People need help. Uh, hallelujah. And then we also have to pray because there are people that take advantage of that as well, too. And this could be why people are afraid to give anymore like they used to. But then again, God tells us, have no fear. When you give, let it go. Amen. Whatever they do with it is between them and God. Amen. He'll, he'll, they'll get your recompense. You can believe that. Amen. And then it says, and in verse 33, I'm on Acts 4.33, and it says, And with great power gave, with great power, there it is, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them. If you want God's grace, you must believe everything Jesus went through. You must believe everything Jesus said, not just pick and choose whatever you thought was cool, whatever you liked at the time, the word of the day. You have to believe everything Jesus said. He is our creator. He's not going to lie to us. Amen. Jesus is not going to lie to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, what I'd like to do now is I would like to go to a couple of, um, a couple, um, let's see if I can, uh, Acts 5.10. There is a couple called Ananias and Sapphira. Now, it's not good, okay, to lie to a bold person, a bold Christian. It's not, if anybody's listening to this and you've done it before and you think it's funny, I would suggest you stop. It's not good to lie to a bold Christian because God will call you out. Amen? Now, chapter 5, it says, Ananias and Sapphira, uh, his wife, sold a possession. Okay, now, as I was telling you earlier, everybody had things, whatever, and they put them in a pot or whatever, they in a purse, whatever you want to call it, and they, or they sold what they had and gave the money to the company, to the disciples, amen, and the apostles, right? So here's Ananias and Sapphira. They thought they were slick. They sold a possession, and they kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it. I mean, his wife knew exactly what was going on. They, both, they were both in on it. They sold something. They sold land, a possession, and his wife also be privy to it and brought a certain, part and, a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So in other words, they were thinking, well, we're going to play both sides here. We're going to give them a little bit of the money. We're going to hold some of the money back. And that's mistrust. That's mistrust. Give it all to the disciples. Give it all to the to the uh, company of of God believers, God fearing believers. Amen. And when if you need something, ask them for it. They'll give it to you. Amen. So they held back. They laid part, a certain part at the apostles' feet. But Peter, here we go, bold Peter. <laughs> but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Oh, and keep back part of the price of the land. How did Peter know that? He operated under the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. He was ordained to do so. People are, you know something? 
People are really something. Uh, like Julius Meyer said, they're fickle. They, people are really something. They, they think that God's ministers don't know things. They think that we are um, blind to their wiles, the wiles of the devil, and that is a lie. The devil is a liar, and he is their father. Amen. You are sinning against the Spirit of God when you lie to a man or a woman of God or you hold back apart. Amen. So what happened? Verse 4, while it remained, was it not thine own, Peter said? He asked him, why are you holding back? Well, he said, why are you lying to the Holy Ghost? Now, when you, when you hear a prophet prophesy, like I do with my good mornings, God will give me a word, and I'll put, if he gives me a word for that morning, I put it on my good mornings from WordPress, and I put it over to Facebook, or, and, uh, well, other, LinkedIn, other places where I'm at. And, and you know, People will lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Amen? And when I'm doing that, I'm doing what Peter is doing here. You've got to be confident that the Holy Spirit is using you. Amen? When I give that word, I just don't sit back and say, eh, what can I say to him today? Who needs a word? I, I say, Lord, what would you have me to say to your people today? And whatever he tells me to type, I type. And Peter's taking confidence. He has confidence that he's filled with the Holy Spirit. He's saying, why are you lying to the Holy He didn't say, why are you lying to me? He said, why are you lying to the Holy Ghost? And he says, while it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived, see, conceived, take that word, think of it, this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. See, Peter's telling you, he spoke up again, bold Peter. He said, you weren't lying to me. You thought you were slick. No, you were lying to God. Amen. You were lying to God. You think, and there's people out there, look, there's people out there, they think they're fighting you. You know, and sometimes that's why God said, that's why Jesus said, pray for your enemies, because some of your enemies can be dumb. Your enemies think they're fighting you, and they think they're getting away with it, and they don't understand. They're fighting the God in you. And I believe, pardon the expression, the word I'm using, but I believe that's why people have so much bad luck. That's why things happen to them, because they're kicking against the pricks. Just like Jesus told uh, Saul, who turned into Paul, he said, why are you kicking against the pricks? People think they're hurting you. They think they're hurting your feelings. They think they're cutting you down. They think they're slowing you down. Amen. And they don't realize God's sitting inside you. The Holy Ghost of God is sitting inside of you watching the whole thing. So no, Satan, you can't take over God's people. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit's in us, and you can best believe that what they, they will get their recompense. As I said, it will, what goes, but the Bible says what goes around comes around, and I believe that's Colossians 3.25. That's only one of them. Colossians 3.25 says, well, go, let me see, let me check it out. There's a, I, I found a couple of them. Let me make sure. Uh, 3.25, yeah, but it says, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. No matter who you are, no matter how rich you are, no matter whether you're in government or the owner of land or no, whatever, you will get back what you gave. Amen. So he's telling them, why did you hold that back from the Holy Ghost? God resists the proud, guys. And so Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. Ananias died. The husband died immediately, gave up the ghost. He fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear, see, came on all of them that heard these things. See, people are like, wow, dude lost his life because he lied to Peter. <laughs> and they don't realize. He, he lied to the Holy Ghost of God. God gave Peter the authority. What are the words we were saying in, in the beginning? Authority. Where's my notes? Okay. A warrant, commission, delegate, certified, credit. Okay. He lied to a person that God had accredited and certified to carry the Holy Ghost in him. All right. And then it says, and the young men arose, the young, uh, of, I'm on verse six, and the young men arose wound him up and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours, three, three hours after when his wife, three hours later, she didn't know he was dead, not knowing what had done, what was done, came in. So she, she had a chance to tell the truth. Her husband's dead. She doesn't know it yet, three hours later. And it says, and Peter answered unto her. <laughs> Here we go. Second, second verse, same as the first. Amen. He said, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. 
And she said, yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Here we go, okay? God is a God of second chances. Peter gave this woman a second chance to tell the truth, and she lied too, thinking that her husband is still alive, not knowing that he lost his life for lying to the man of God. Don't, whoever's listening, this is a word for you. Don't lie to the man or the woman of God because they smile in your face and it seems like you got away with it doesn't mean you got away with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Talking about respecter of persons, it's also in Acts 10. Let's go to Acts 10. I just noticed that. Thank you, Lord. He had to bring it up because I didn't. Wouldn't. Let me see. Acts 10, um, verse 34, Peter again. Let me see. Acts 10, 34. Peter again says, Then Peter opened up his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Amen. God, no partiality. God is universal. God gives everybody a chance. Either you're on his side or you're not. Prove which side you are on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Does your voice bring on the Holy Ghost? Are people afraid of the God in you? Do they respect you because they know they don't want God to get them? Amen. And now I'm going to read from, I believe, 38. Let me see if it's the same as my notes. 38, okay. 38. How God, I'm in uh, Acts 10, 38. It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen. Amen. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and Jerusalem, whom they slew and they hung him on a tree. Him God raised up on thir- up, the, up the third day and showed him openly for everybody to see. Jesus died for you, and everybody saw what happened to him, and God showed him openly. Amen. Amen. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Amen. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name that whosoever believeth in his name shall receive remission of sins. You want to believe you want to get rid of your sins, believe in Jesus. Amen. You don't pay anybody, you don't pay away your sins. You can't do that. That's worldly. It doesn't work. Amen. That is of the devil. You can't You Look, the devil is the father of commerce. Okay? And that stuff belongs to him. And when you're calling yourself, paying yourself, to paying your way out of hell or paying your way out of sins or out of trouble, you know, some people have books of sins with a, with a price beside it. You know, you know, you fornicated, that's $200. You stole something that's buck fifty. You know what I'm saying? And and that's not of God. That is of the devil who is the father of commerce. Let's get it right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Where's that? Oh, uh, verse forty four. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Does the Holy Ghost fall on everybody that hears you speaking, or do you speak so out of sorts? That people don't know how to take you. Everybody wants to be a comedian. There are too many Christians nowadays trying. Yeah, thank you, Lord. There are too many Christians nowadays trying to be comedians. You can have a good time. You can have a good life. But stop playing with the word of God. Stop turning the word of God into a show. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, you don't crack jokes about the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then, um, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. That means Peter was a bad something, something. 
Peter was awesome. Peter was so good. He was pulling in Jews. He was pulling in Gentiles. Peter had the mouth. Peter was the speaker. He was the mouthpiece. Amen. And I'm not talking about, well, I guess he say Bluetooth, God's Bluetooth. Amen. Peter had the Holy Ghost in him. And when he spoke like E.F. Hutton, people heard him. Yeah, well, some of you might not remember remember that commercial, but it says, when E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. Amen. For they heard them speak with tongues, and now they're seeing all this, right? They heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, and then answered Peter. He said, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? He said, yeah, we can get them too. The more the merrier. Amen. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Amen. And I'm going to end with some, some scripture. I'll say real quick. I've got a few of them here. So I'm going to end it real quick. If you guys want to write this down, amen, I'm going to give it to you so you can write it down. Just a minute here. Okay. All right. Anywho. There we go. I lost my, my uh, speaking of Bluetooth, I lost my mouse. There we go. Okay, here we go. Ecclesiastes 8.1, 8.8.1. 8, 8, it says, who is the wise man and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine and the boldness of his face shall be changed. Acts 4.13. Now, when they saw boldness, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled. <laughs> you know, some people, when you start speaking the word of God, I'm one of them. I know people didn't believe I was saved for years, and they, some of them still don't, and they'll let me know it too. You know, but these, they, they saw these, they called them ignorant men, and people marveled at that. They marveled at the knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They marvel because Jesus picked people like this. People in your life are going to marvel because you believe in Jesus Christ, because you're a follower of Jesus Christ, because they didn't think, there are people out there that they don't think you're anything. They don't believe in you, and some of them are jealous and don't want you to be anything. Amen? Acts 4.29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. You can ask God to give you boldness. Acts 4.29, write it down, amen, and he will give you boldness. Ask him every day. Ask God for anything you want. If it's not meant for you to have it, he'll let you know. He's not going to smack you in the face or hit your hand, right? Amen. Ask him for what you want. Acts 13.46, then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, you judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. See, the Jews wouldn't listen to them, so they went to the Gentiles. Amen. Pray for Israel. Jesus tells us, pray for Jerusalem. Amen. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for those who don't. There's Messianic Jews and there's Orthodox Jews. Messianic believes in the Messiah. Orthodox Jews still goes by the, the, uh, the law of Moses. Amen. They will not accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God. They don't, well, put it this way, they don't think he came back yet. Acts 14.3, long time therefore abode they speaking boldly, once again speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. If you want signs and wonders, you've got to be bold. Be bold. Acts 18.26, and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue when, uh, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, another husband and wife team that, that taught uh, important people, Christians actually, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Uh, let's go down to Second Corinthians 10.2. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. What he's saying is there are going to be people who are going to treat you like you're fleshly. There are going to be people who don't believe that you're a minister to most high God. There are going to be people who don't believe that you're saved. So what? Amen? And he said he got to be bold. He, there's some people he's saying here he has to be bold with, and then there's some people when he's with his people, they just believe. Amen? Don't let... The enemy outbold you, okay? And then Ephesians 6, 19, 
As for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Write down Ephesians 6, 19. When you're having a problem, pray that. Ask God to make you bold so that you can make known the mystery of the gospel. The gospel is mystery. Amen. And I got three more. Philippians 1, 20. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, don't be ashamed of God. Be bold. Whatever, don't worry about what's going to happen. God's going to take care of you. Amen. Amen. Stephen got stoned for loving the Lord. We can't tell people about the love of Jesus Christ because we're afraid they're going to make fun of us or they're going to, you know, not believe us. I have people right now don't even believe I'm a preacher. Amen. They make fun of me. They're like, no, surely you don't. For real, though? <laughs> you know? Yes, for real, you know. Much to your chagrin, yes, I'm a preacher. I study, and I give the word out for the kingdom of heaven. I wouldn't trade it for the world. First Thessalonians 2.2, 2, don't back down. They didn't back down. It says, but even after that, we have suffered before. And were shamefully entreated, as you know, at Philippi. Philippi ought to be ashamed of herself. We were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God which, with much contention. There was a lot, a lot of contention going on, a lot of mess going on, and they still spoke the word of God. You guys hear me with this internet. The microphone works one day, and the next Sunday it doesn't work, and then I've got to go from one program to, and I've been to about three different programs, and I'm still rolling down that track. Amen, because God is good. Amen. With God, all things are possible. Amen. And the last one, 1 John four seventeen. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because he is, because as he is, so are we in this world. You've heard as above, so below. Amen. So as Jesus was and is to this day, so are you. Stop letting the devil take away your Holy Ghost joy. Stop allowing evil to outbold you. Hallelujah. Stop allowing evil to take over your life. Stop you from sleeping. Stop you from being healed. You stick to your guns and you say, Jesus told me by his stripes, I am, was, and still will always be healed. Amen. Don't accept anything that is not of God. You know your Father. Amen. And your Father knows you. Are you saved? People listening to this, I'm, some are, and I'm sure there's some it might not be. If you want to get saved and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and be on a winning side, just say this. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Thank you. I accept you as my Savior. I believe you died on that cross and rose three days later for me. And I appreciate it. I accept you as my Savior. I love you. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you did that, welcome to the family of God. Hallelujah. Welcome to the body of Christ. Don't let anybody rip you off and try to steal it away from you. Amen. Hallelujah. God, the Bible says that God took your sins just now. Up to this moment, God took your sins and threw them as far as the east is from the west. I mean, now, look, if God forgave them, don't bring them back yourself. Amen. The devil might use other people to try to bring it back, but let that, that's his. That's his business, right? You know that you are now saved. You're a child of the Most High God. Walk ye therefore in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God is good. Hallelujah. God is good. I thank all of you for coming on today. I thank you for being here. Hallelujah. God thanks you for being here. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. God be gracious unto you. Hallelujah. And give you his peace. Give you his peace. I speak shalom over you. Peace in Jesus' holy name. And remember Israel. Listen, okay. People leave this last line out. This is God's prayer. This is the one he told us to pray out of his own mouth. Okay, the last line, don't forget Israel. Pray for Israel and you'll be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Reverend Essie signing off.
To God be the glory. Go eat, drink, be merry. Tell everybody about Jesus. Get out there in your gardens or whatever you do or have a nice meal with your friends. Amen. And have a beautiful day. Amen.